Hello, this is Michael Rubin, and we have been talking about blues on the chromatic harmonica. And what I did last time, which I'll do in the future whenever this is applicable, is I had an idea that you could understand the theory about, but you didn't need to. So I handed you the idea in the first video. In the second video, I explained to you the theory behind it, why it worked. On this next idea, maybe it's got a little bit of theory, but not too much. So we're going to squeeze it all into this one video. So what I want to talk about is bending on the chromatic. Just like you can bend on a diatonic, you can bend on a chromatic. But different like a di than a diatonic, you can bend whether or not you're blowing or drawing anywhere on the instrument. See, on a diatonic, the way that the reeds interact together, you have to bend from the higher of the two pitches in the hole. So you bend on the draw notes from 1 through 6 and the blow notes from 7 through 10. But on the chromatic, probably because of the valves, that physics uh, gets thwarted. I'm not exactly sure why it gets thwarted. I'm not a physics guy. I'm a theory guy. But, um, but uh, you can bend on all the blow notes and all the draw notes. Now, when you bend, you go lower in pitch. So normally on the diatonic, when you're bending, you're trying to go to notes that are lower than the note that's built in. So for example, on a C harp, if you were drawing on hole three draw, B, you could bend it down to B flat, to A, and to A flat. Now on a diatonic, that's, a, uh, that's the lowest one that you can go to on a standard diatonic. On a chromatic, you can also bend, they call that bending in half steps. The distance between any two consecutive keyboard notes is called a half step. And on a chromatic, you can also bend down a half step, but you can even bend further, just like on hole number three, draw. If you really have a gentle touch on the chromatic, and that's important, you can bend really low. Really low, right? But most people don't. They just bend a little bit on the chromatic. Why? That's because on the diatonic, until you're bending, some of the notes that are on the piano are just not available on the diatonic. You have to bend in order to produce those notes. Even then, sometimes you got to overblow to produce the, the note that's on the piano. But that's not true on the chromatic. The chromatic has every note that's on the piano built into it. So here are the white notes, and generally speaking, here are the black notes. It's a little bit more complex than that, but that's a good, good starting point. So when you bend, you can get another note. For example, if one draw is D, you can bend it down to C sharp, and then down to C, and down to B, and B flat. Just keep going down in half steps until it chokes out. But most people don't. They're not, the reason is that bent note is available somewhere else on the chromatic in a more stable way. So I could bend from D to C sharp, but I could also draw on D and blow button for C sharp. And it's a more stable note. So what's the purpose of bending on the chromatic? Well, it's a lot of what the purpose is for bending on the diatonic. You know, bending on the diatonic is not just to create a note. It's also to create a cool sound. So that's what bending on the chromatic is really for. Cool sounds. So listen, I'm going to blow and I'm going to bend. I'm going to push in the button. I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw with the button. Now, you may see me um, in what seems to be the, um, the uh, puckering position. I'm actually U-blocking. That's my preferred position for single notes on the chromatic, although I do pucker sometimes and I tongue block other times. I tongue block a heck of a lot on the chromatic, but for single notes, mostly I U-block. I think it has the best tone and the best facility and responsiveness, which basically means when I ask the chromatic to do something, it says, yes, sir. How hot, you know, 
You want me to jump? Yes, sir. How high? So in any case, when you bend on a chromatic, if you bend too low, which often happens if you bend hard, the note doesn't respond anymore. It's got a choke point. The softer you go, the lower that choke point will be. But sometimes when you're playing, you can't really jump into soft mode. So you're going to have to expect that there's going to be some choking on the, on the chromatic. And that's part of your job, is to play every hole on the chromatic and search for your choke points and understand how far you can go when you're playing soft, but also how far you can go when you're playing hard. It's generally going to choke much quicker if you're playing hard. So, there are two main ways that people use bends on the chromatic. The first I call it a DWA, D-W-A, and that's my own term, but it, it seems to have caught on over the years. Uh, it can also be called a dip bend or a scoop bend. And it means to begin on the bend sound and quickly release it to the unbent sound. So the important thing is the quickly. The, the bent sound should be so fast, it's, it's like a grace note. So this is a DWA. But this is not. Right? Now, in a dwa, the unbent note, the second sound, can be quick or can take a minute. They're both dwas. The second way, oh, let me play a little with a lot of dwas. So the second idea is called a claw. That's also my own term. And a claw means to begin on a non-bent note and quickly go to the bent note. But the important thing about a claw is that both notes are quick. So you're not going to hang on the bent note. That's not a claw. So I called it a claw because it reminds me of a cat going, yeah. Right? So, to really hear somebody... Now, hey, from the Harmonicats to Larry Adler to Little Walter to George Smith to William Clark and Rod Piazza, all these big-name guys are doing Dwaz and Claws. They're all, they're all doing them, okay? But to really get the idea of somebody who just has it as an integral part of their sound. Listen to Stevie Wonder. And if you don't have the album Evets Red Now, get that. Evets is Stevie spelled backwards, and Red Now is Wonder spelled backwards. Uh, once you've spent some time listening to that, in my opinion, the blues guy who really used them uh, in a great way was Paul DeLay. All right, I'll see you later. Oh, remember, I give uh, Skype lessons and uh, my... Uh, website is michaelrubinharmonica.com. Thanks very much.